Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. And yes, I am working in governmental hospital in Russia. So, let's talk about mitochondria. Why did they get a lot of attention recently? What are the mitochondria? What are they doing? The thing is, they are implicated in many chronic diseases we never expected before. And improving the health of mitochondria may help with the treatment of uh, many diseases. We think that mitochondria, even they are small organelles inside our cells that produce energy. Evolutionary, it was not always like that. Evolution made them the same organism with us, but they may have a bacterial origin. And many, many, many thousand years ago, looks like these bacteria, they came inside the cell and um, Mm, they liked each other so much, they decided to help each other, and then they came into symbiosis. And now, nowadays, we all have this uh, mitochondria inside our cells. The thing is, these mitochondria have their own genetic material, distinct of what all our cells have. They have their own mitochondrial DNA. And these mitochondria, uh, before we thought they are just energy producers, but now we understand that they have a lot of functions. For example, they are implicated in lipid metabolism, in calcium homeostasis, in uh, work of many enzymes, in chemical processes, in apoptosis regulation. And it's connected to calcium because calcium is very reactive. And um, if it's a lot of calcium inside the cell, it will kill the cell. That's why mitochondria grab this calcium, extra calcium, and keep it inside, protecting the cell. When we need to do the programmed cell death, self-killing of the cell, if this cell is problematic or dangerous for us, mitochondrial will release calcium and uh, the cell will die. And also, uh, innate immunity needs mitochondria for its function and they produce ketone bodies. And as I said before, mitochondrial dysfunction is identified in many common diseases. Even historically we thought it's just uh, only primary mitochondrial diseases that are inherited, that are rare, that are connected to muscle weakness or dysfunction of, or dysfunction of neural system. Nowadays we know that even chronic acquired diseases are connected to mitochondrial dysfunction, including heart failure, including infarctions, strokes, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, and even cancer. And mitochondrial medicine is aimed to improving the health of mitochondria in order to reverse these diseases. So, our plan is to talk about the methods of this reversal, how to improve the health of our mitochondria. So, let's get started. These are syndromes uh, that are inherited, that are rare, and you can see they are quite severe. You can see a lot of abnormality in those, for example, kids. They may have uh, strokes early in their age. But if we talk about acquired mitochondrial dysfunction, you can see a lot of different diseases, including obesity, diabetes, fatty liver disease, etc. And also cancer. Uh, I was talking about it in mitochondrial metabolic theory of cancer, the other alternative theory of cancer development and alternative approach to treatment, that the tumors are developing because of mitochondrial dysfunction, not because of mutation. That means all these chronic diseases, we see them every day in our lives, around us, sometimes in us. That's why every person must think about his mitochondrial health. For example, here also are talking about obesity and mitochondrial dysfunction. This is the nice figure. Uh, we are not going to discuss all the details, but here you can see the mitophagy. It's a part of autophagy. When old organelles that are already dysfunctional will be digested, recycled into pieces, so they are cell may use these pieces to produce some new organelles or components or proteins, whatever. This is the first method to 
renew mitochondria to improve their health. We'll talk about it later. And there is other part of the cycle. You can see here, for example, uh, the Krebs cycle where mitochondria produce energy. This is succinate. We we're talking about it in separate three videos where I was explaining what is the role of succinate and um, when we can use it in which diseases and when it's dangerous to use succinate. You can watch it in this channel. Also, look, carnitine. It helps to bring fats inside the mitochondria to produce energy and glutamine, the other source of tumor fuel. We were discussing it in mitochondrial theory of cancer video also. And also CoQ10. You can see it here in the electron transport chain. Also very important for protection of mitochondria as an antioxidant and for production of energy. Also, I want to tell you about mitochondrial transfer that cells with good mitochondria may give their good mitochondria to the cells with uh, problematic mitochondria to restore them. It's also very important. Why are you telling this? Because uh, in a um, few minutes we will be discussing how to improve mitochondria. This is a nice article of 2024. You can see the name and authors and read in more details about mitochondrial medicine. Okay, so how can you investigate your mitochondrial health? Do you have any dysfunction or not? Unfortunately, nowadays we don't have uh, methods for usual people to, uh, to study their mitochondria. Because it needs a lot of equipment, uh, big uh, centers, scientific centers, I mean. But, as you know, if you have some of diseases that I mentioned before, you may have also a mitochondrial dysfunction because we always see this dysfunction in these diseases. But I found a nice article where the authors, they were investigating different blood tests and watched how often they are abnormal when there is a dysfunction of mitochondria. Many tests are not available for usual person to go to the lab and do. But, for example, you can do lactate, creatine kinase, creatinine, and these tests, uh, especially if all of them are abnormal, gives you more chance of having abnormality. If uh, they are normal, there is less chance of abnormality, but still there is no 100% sensitive or specific test for that. So what are the treatment options? You can see here exercise protocols, dietary supplements, different uh, coenzyme Q10 and acetylcysteine, uh, vitamins, uh, some drugs that are developed to protect mitochondria or restore them. So let's start from the easiest, from the food and supplements. How can we support our mitochondria? We know that for mitochondrial activity, we need some vitamins, macro and micronutrients. And there are some dietary approaches uh, to support mitochondria. For example, carnitine. There are a lot of supplements of carnitine of different forms. They help to transport fats into mitochondria, to produce energy, to protect mitochondria. Also, CoQ10 that facilitates the production of energy and is a powerful antioxidant protecting mitochondria creatinine that is a good buffer of energy for muscles vitamin b2 that is needed also for production of energy inside of mitochondria again that's why i was showing you this scheme this is a nice article discussing the feeding of mitochondria you can see here a lot of different substances including caffeine melatonin lipoic acid taurine for example, selenium is needed to pr produce new mitochondria. Also, ketone bodies, um, when we do fasting or we do keto diet, when there are not enough carbs, the body starts to produce ketone bodies from the fats. Mostly this process happens in mitochondria of the liver. And these ketone bodies are good for health of mitochondria. Also, when we do fasting, for example, autophagy is activated and mitophagy, I told you about recycling of old dysfunctional mitochondria. This is mitophagy and new will be generating. That is the good thing about fasting. Before I was talking about MCT oil as a source of ketone bodies that I told you already are good for mitochondria. 
you can watch this video. And ketone bodies and keto diet showed a lot of uh, evidence of effectiveness in many diseases. And also there is some clinical data on humans. So in which diseases? In strokes, myocardial infarction, in Alzheimer's disease, in Parkinson's disease, in spinal cord injury, in um, epilepsy, in cancer. For example, this article discusses the good effect of ketone bodies in uh, spinal cord injury in rats, that it can restore the health of mitochondria and the function. There are a lot of clinical trials of different supplements and drugs for restoration of mitochondria. For example, there is some good effect of this study drug with uh, interesting abbreviation name. Abbreviation because it's not still registered, it doesn't have a name yet. But there, is, there are some improvements in dry eye syndrome, for example. The other drug, improvements in insulin sensitivity in diabetes. What else? We can not only feed mitochondria, but we can also increase uh, new mitochondria formation. There is a gene called uh, PGC1-alpha that increases production of mitochondria. So we want to activate this gene, right? And interesting thing that it's activated by exercise. Have you ever noticed that if you don't do any exercises, if you are very sedentary, you feel like you're very tired always, you want always to sleep, you don't have any energy. But if you do exercises and sports systematically, you feel in tone, you feel like you have a lot of energy, you feel better in general. Well, that is because this gene is activated and new mitochondria are formed. And your cells have a lot of mitochondria and they produce a lot of energy. You're not always tired. And by the way, there are some drugs that can also uh, help to form new mitochondria, like anti-diabetic drugs, metformin, glitazones, or resveratrol, powerful and famous antioxidant. There are some drugs also that help to with um, dynamics of mitochondria. Mitochondria can get um, fuse and become big or become small, separate, split. The state of mitochondria is uh, regulated by the body depending on uh, the needs. And in some diseases that processes may be impaired. And of course there are drugs uh, that are investigated, that are developed to control this process. So good luck to the scientists. And there are also mitochondrial uncouplers that will uncouple the burning of uh, calories from energy production. That means all the calories will be burned without energy production, meaning that all we eat will form no energy and um, it will help to lose weight. The problem is all the energy will be released with heat, meaning uh, we will get high temperature of our body. But of course, it's effective in losing weight. There are new drugs developed that will uncouple mitochondria that are more mild, have, have more mild uh, side effects. And uh, they are also effective in reducing the fatty liver. You can see here there is the clinical trial with this drug already. So I hope it will be registered in near future. And also there is mitochondrial transplantation. We know that we can take healthy mitochondria and inject them into place where there is a problem to try to restore it. And this approach is used in many diseases already. Unfortunately, still preclinical, still on animals, in heart uh, problems, in strokes, infarctions, uh, kidney problems, in Parkinson's disease, liver disease. Alzheimer's in spinal cord injury in different lung diseases and also other approaches to take stem cells and inject into problematic space uh, please and stem cells may be also the source uh, the donor of this mitochondria healthy mitochondria and this direction of mitochondrial medicine is quite promising so based on what I told you and based on all the articles I read today I made a small list for you. How to improve the health of your mitochondria. First of all, of course, active lifestyle, of course, exercises. It will help to produce more mitochondria. Intermittent fasting, keto diet, MCT oil will help with mitophagy, recycling of old 
dysfunctional mitochondria and production of new ones. Also, with the ketone bodies will help with health of mitochondria. Of course, food, berries, green leafy vegetables, nuts, non-starchy vegetables, different legumes, whole grains, everything that is rich in antioxidants, in vitamins, in CoQ10, and also omega-3, fatty fish, flaxseed, walnuts. This all helps to get nutrients needed for mitochondria function and protection. Of course, you should work with your stress, do yoga, meditation, some relaxation, um, deep breathing exercises. And of course, there is a recent video on medicinal mushrooms against depression and against anxiety. Watch it also, a very interesting topic. Next, cold shower helps to produce new mitochondria and heal dysfunctional ones. Avoid toxins and bad habits, smoking, alcohol. Try to avoid uh, pesticides because I understand they are used everywhere now. All the food is full of pesticides. By the way, they are mitochondrial toxins. And in labs, the scientists, if they want to damage mitochondria in order to try to heal them afterwards in experiments, they can use some pesticides. That means we all must think about our mitochondrial health because we always get these mitochondrial toxins, poisons. Next, of course, sunlight, vitamin D are very important. Uh, and uh, supplements, they all have problems. Uh, they all have um, quite low ability to get inside the mitochondria. These are resveratrol, CoQ10, carnitine, creatine, vitamin B2, epigenin, leucine, lipoic acid, berberine, acetylcysteine, succinate. Again, watch video about succinate, I made it before. Epigallocatechin gallate from green tea, curcumin and methylene blue. And some study drugs and uh, also metformin. So, dear friends, I hope it was useful for you. Thank you for watching this video. I would appreciate if you support this channel. You can become our sponsor or support us in PayPal or buy me a coffee. Also, I would appreciate if you share this video or just write any comment. Anyway, thank you for being here with me today and I wish you best of luck. God bless you. Goodbye. Don't be